All right. So uh, sometimes people wonder why they're supposed to come to church. Like, why do I even come to church? What's up with church? Why am I coming to church? Well, you know, some, there's a, I have to be here. Yeah, I have to be here. I have to be here. But when you come to church, there's, you know, there's a lot of different reasons you come, people come to church, and there's a lot of really good reasons for people to come to church. You know, part of, part of coming to church is, you know, we're all the body of Christ, and when you're not here, there's part of the body that's missing. And there's, there's, a, there's a real, there's, that's a reality, like a real tangible reality, physical reality is um, if, if you're supposed to be here and you're not here, part of the body is missing. And you might have had something that somebody needed that day that, you know, these live stream cameras are awesome. They're awesome. And praise God that we get to utilize that and, and people can watch us all around the world. But, you know, if, if you're watching a live stream cam and you're like, you know, a block away, <laughs> hey, man, come on in. You know, there's, because the ministry flows out the cameras, but sometimes it doesn't flow through. It doesn't flow back through. You can, you know, you can sit at home, you can, you can prayerfully support us and, and things of that nature. But another big part, and, and probably like one of the most important reasons why people come to church is because there's, or I should say a church like this. Like when you come to a church like this, there's going to be revelation from God's word released. So you come to church to receive revelation of the word of God. And when the word gets released to you, it gets released in, it's like a seed. You know, the word of God comes forth as a seed. And when you receive the seed with faith, that brings that word. It plants that word in your heart. You know, and when you receive revelation from the word, things change. So one of the reasons why, you know, and, and, and you know, I'm not saying you have to physically be here, but it's good to physically be here because there's something in the, in the presence of this place. You know, in worship, worship is great watching over a live stream, but I know there's been Sundays where, uh, you know, people have been at home for, or traveling for various reasons. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, I watched worship. It looked like it was really good. And I'm like, man, <laughs> really good doesn't, like, describe what happened at the service this morning. It was, like, the power of God, like, you know, being released. And, um, well, Fred and I, we, we, we uh, do a TV, do a radio show on Tuesdays, and we also get to record a TV show called Supernatural Now. And you can watch it either on uh, K-Sun Channel 4, or you can watch it on our Facebook page, or our YouTube channel. And this past Tuesday, and we've had like, the presence of the God show up in strong ways, but this past Tuesday we recorded three episodes. And I just have to say, like, the, the revelation that was coming out as we were talking, and we had some special guests in the studio, and the power of God, like the, 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 I'm not making this up, like the manifest presence of God that was in the studio was uh, unbelievable. This praise God. I mean, it's just unbelievable. We're, in a, you know, we're not at a Christian television station. We're just recording in a TV studio, and the presence of God is just showing up as his people testify to his goodness and share about the revelation that they receive. So if you, haven't, if you haven't watched the show, please watch it. It's really awesome. Those episodes are going to be released probably in the next uh, couple, month or two. Um, but, you know, it was, we've, we've had, I think it was like the three episodes and just, a, I don't know, well, I don't know what's going on, but Fred can testify to it. It was just the presence of God showing up in a strong way. But the real, one of the biggest reasons why you come into this building is to receive revelation from the Word of God. And sometimes when revelation comes out, it it, it's revelation, so it's not what you already know, right? So if it's something, you know, maybe a verse that you've read a hundred times, but if the Lord is speaking, and he's speaking through me to release revelation, and you're like, I've never heard it that way before, well, praise God, amen? <laughs> like, you know, and, but when you receive revelation, when you receive something that, like, I've never heard that before, you don't just take it back and say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust in the word of my pastor, or I'm going to trust in the word of the speaker or whoever was speaking that day. You have to take it back, and you have to take it back to God's word and get, receive your personal revelation. You know, you got to make that revelation your revelation and receive it. And when it becomes your own revelation, th then that, that seed is in you, and that seed is growing, and it becomes powerful, and it, it changes things. You know, we talked about, um, the, the, we were talking at Bible study, the seven sons of Sceva, or Sceva, you know, the, the guys who are like, in the name of Paul and Jesus, you know, they're kind of like, yeah, we heard Jesus say this through Paul. We, we have a lot of faith in Paul, you know. And the, you know, the, the, the demoniac is like, oh, I've heard of Paul, I've heard of Jesus, but who are you, man? Like, you don't have, you, you know, you, you got to make that revelation yours, you know what I mean? You got to make the revelation yours. It has become yours, be personal. So then, and then when it becomes yours, it becomes powerful, amen? 
And, and sometimes when, when you're in a place like this and you hear something, it may not exactly agree with you in the moment, you know? It may not exactly agree with you in the moment. And you might be like, Arr. I'm just going to challenge you. Don't shut it down. Don't be like, uh, time to check my email. Don't shut it down. Just put, maybe set that aside and say, okay, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that later. But I'm, I'm just going to stay tuned in to what you're, what you're saying and what you're doing here right now today. Amen. You know, you know, the people watching the live stream, don't be like, oh, that's, that's, I can't believe that. That's, I never heard that before. Don't, don't shut it off because we're going to a new place. Amen. We're going to a new place. We're growing in our faith. We're growing in the revelation of God's word. And things, are, things should strike you as, huh, I don't know if I've ever heard that before. Yeah, praise God. You don't know it all. I don't know it all. But God's word, know, God knows it all. And as we grow, and as we grow in his spirit and we grow in his word, he's going to reveal new things to us. And we're all on this journey. We're on this journey together, amen? We're on this journey together. We're growing together. We're receiving revelation and we're moving forward together. So, all right. Uh, Fred, Pastor Fred has a, a uh, testimony. I asked him to come up and share. And so not only does Fred get to make radio, do radio and TV shows and all kinds of super awesome ministry and... and Serve with Kevin and Shannon. We were over at um, New, Now Faith Ministries on Luann Drive last night serving their church Thanksgiving dinner. Um, he also has a day job. I do. Was that on? Was that on? I do have a day job. Um, I have a day job and, a, and kind of a night job. I go to school full time and uh, I work as a carpenter. And, and he's really good. In case and so it's really, it's really amazing that. because, you know, I'm a pastor. I was called to be a pastor at first when God told me, when he gave me this. This mission, I said, no way, you're out of your ever-loving mind. <laughs> and I ran like the wind for years and years. Well, just two years. So, yeah, years. Years and years. Year and year. Year and year. Two. Um, so I ran. Two years. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you can't get away. Our God is persistent. His love, his love will pursue you. He is, he is always right there. And, and so I became a pastor. So then I had to go from, from this man that I was, a carpenter, and a drinker and a drug addict and all these things. I had to walk into this, I got to walk into this, this new mission, this, this thing that God called me to, and doors were opened up. So now I'm a pastor, and I, I'm, I'm a pastor, and I, what, do, what, do, what do pastors do? Well, we preach every Sunday, we get behind this thing. It's been almost a year now since I've been behind the pulpit. And I've had to re- have God redesign who I am in my, in my mind and in my heart. I'm still a pastor at heart. That call has never left. But he's got me in a different season where I'm back to pounding nails. And I've been fighting with this thing so bad because I just have not finding a lot of joy in the labor of my hands. I say, thank you, Lord, for being able to do this. But I'm like, Lord, you made me to be a pastor. And now you got me doing this. And I got all these guys and... And, you know, these guys are having troubles with the world, you know. They're, they're in the world and not of the Lord. And you got one guy who says, yeah, I'm a Christian, and then he's doing what guys do. And, and, and so it's just like, Lord, so my job sucks. The guys that I work with are stupid, and I'm struggling. <laughs> hey, how many people can relate to that? You don't have to raise your hand, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, man. <laughs> no, we can keep that online because... Because the thing that I'm realizing is I've been blessed to uh, have Brother Noah uh, come to work a couple of days with me at the job site. Is that the guy who doesn't swear? That's the guy who doesn't swear. Yeah, he caught me. That's the guy who doesn't swear. Because I'm talking to some of these guys like, well, you know, every now and again I'll pound my hand or something and maybe I'll swear. But (laughs) I try not to. So Noah's standing there on a ladder six, eight feet up in the air on a ladder. He's like, I told the guy, I said, I don't know anybody who doesn't pray. Noah looks down at me like, doesn't swear. "I I don't swear. Like what? Well, I don't swear. He's like once in a while I might say the c word, c r a p. Oh, we don't want to say that out loud. <laughs> uh, but I really don't swear. I just don't find it valuable. And so wait, wait, so wait, so wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you guys are. What is this? A church web or a church uh, construction site? You're working. Yes, on? we're building churches. You're building churches. You're working with church monasteries uh, and churches. No, no, no. This, these guys are construction workers. You know what I mean? They kind of you have profane language, and yet Noah can stand up and say, "I don't swear." So and what, did, did they, did they, did they, did with they one tease of, you? Did they say, "Man, you're a little bit," or did they just say, "Oh," and that was the end of it? Stuck your head in the toilet. <laughs> no, you just said, "I don't do that," and they were like, "Oh," and that was the end of it, right? 
I mean, that's it. They're like, oh, okay. And see, how does all this play? How does all this play? Because wait, 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 wait. Got to get to the testimony, Fred. We're building up to the... Oh, we are? Yes, the part about oh, the... Guy was healed. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Fred's ready to preach a message, but I, I know, you got to get to the... You gave me the mic. I know, but you got to share the testimony. Okay, so f- I'll get there. Fred's at work. <laughs> Fred's struggling. I'm having a really hard time because... I'm adjusting to this new thing, and, and I feel like this calling them, and I'm putting out resumes. I've been applying for over two years, or about two years. Nothing. I can't get a second call, and God calls me back into this construction thing, and I'm doing it, and I'm struggling, I'm struggling, and, and so Noah has helped me to recognize that, one, I'm an example where I'm at. Amen. So I, I welcome Noah, you know, brought him in to the job site. He's my brother in Jesus Christ. And he has held me accountable. He's held me to the standard by which I've been called. And I welcome that and I thank that because that's what I need sometimes. I need a brother. I need a Amen. sister to help me to, to increase my walk. Pastor Rogers helped me. And this is another thing with his declaring, declaring victory and finding that courage and that strength to pray for people. So the other day at work, uh, my boss was uh, decided to lift a, a 12-foot, 54-inch a uh, sheet of drywall, five A's thick. It's pretty heavy. It's probably about 90 pounds. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Is your boss? <laughs> my boss is... Um, you, you see your boss, right? Yeah. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, cool. So my right. boss, um, he's the owner of the company. That's why we call him boss. And he's lifting up this heavy sheet of... Bo- he's lifting up this heavy sheet. He's by himself. You know, he's doing work that, that he shouldn't be doing by himself. You know, it's too much. But he's like, well, shoot, I can do this. And he lifted it up and he cranked his back. And I just happened to walk into the room, and he's bent over like this, and he's just like, man, my back hurts so bad, I can't. And he's having struggles to even stand up or, you know, that that when your back is Mm. so hurt that you don't know whether to stand up or or bend over, and you find Mm. that spot. And it just, the Lord had me to lay my hands on him. I said, well, the Jesus that I know. He wants you healed, and I laid hands on him, and I just prayed, said, in the name of Jesus Christ, all muscles return back to the way they were, all tendons to the way that God designed them, back realigned. There is none of this in the name of Jesus, because this is the way my Jesus rolls. You will, you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And he stands up, and he's like, this is really weird. I'm like, what? He's like, my body is tingling and I am sweating and I'm feeling something in my body. And he's like, what is this? What is this? And he's bending and, he's, and he leaped and he's like, oh my gosh, this is weird. I said, this isn't weird. This is normal. Amen. Because this is the Amen. way my Jesus rolls. Amen. He is a healer. So now, mm. praise God. I gave you the testimony you asked for. You, uh, you, uh, <laughs> so now I want to, I just want to, I, I want to say this, and I want to make this really clear, because through Brother <laughs> Noah, through everything else, God has been revealing that I'm a pastor, even on a construction site. Amen. So, Amen. So I've got guys who are, are atheists on my crew who say, I don't believe in all that Jesus stuff. It's like, that's okay. I said, but here's what's going to happen. Praise Every God. morning at 7 a.m., <laughs> I'm going to meet right here at the top of the stairs. And if you want to pray, if you want to be part of this prayer, I'm going to pray. You don't have to. I understand. I'm not going to force anything down your throat. But there will be prayer right here. And I'm going to pray for the safety of each and every one of you. I'm going to pray for a good day. I'm going to pray for the work site. And every day, every man has been there. Even the atheists are bowing their heads and hearing the word of God. The job site is changing. Amen. We made a huge shift from a bunch of guys who say, I don't have to listen to you, I'm a subcontractor, to a bunch of guys who are starting to recognize their value in the kingdom that they don't even necessarily believe in. <laughs> so now they're starting to walk out with joy. The curse hmm. words are coming down. The work is elevating the quality of work, the speed at which we're working, the efficiency, the effectiveness, everything is growing and it's all because Jesus and it's all because guys like brother Noah who are helping me to walk better and understand my place on the work site is Pastor Fred it might be foreman it might be superintendent it might be all those other things but above and beyond all of that it's Pastor Fred now Fred just for uh, just for everybody listening here 
Would it be okay if somebody who wasn't a pastor did this at work? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's just, that, it's just that thing for me. Yeah. God is reminding me because in my heart and in my spirit, I'm struggling with giving up that thing that I worked so hard for that, that I didn't believe I could be. And so even though you, you are called to be Christian, brother, sister of Christ, sons and daughters of, of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That is the call. That is the call to love God and to love your neighbor. And it doesn't matter where you're at and the right. job can really stink. But I tell you what, <laughs> when, you learn, when you learn to not let your circumstance dictate your character, but rather the character of Christ that is in you, he that dwells inside of you, you allow him to change the atmosphere in which you work, Things will change. Do not be discouraged. Do not get downtrodden. Do not allow people to speak lies into your life, but learn to listen and know who you are and what you are and whose you are. Because in that, there is power. There is authority. See, the darkness is an idiot. Pardon me, but this, this, little, this little fella, he's been telling the same lies since the beginning. And that's just what they are. They are just lies to try and convince you to not walk in power and authority. Amen. But God has given you power and authority. John 17, 18, 19, and 20 speaks of that very Ooh. power. He says that those who will come to believe in the word, I give this blessing to them as well. So some people read it and they say, well, that's just the disciples. Mm. But no, Jesus made sure that you and I would know that we have power and authority. We have the same Holy Spirit in us, driving us and moving us and loving us through these times that are apparent darkness. But beloved, it's not darkness, it's a lie. Amen. And a lie can be Amen. overcome by the truth Love, perfect love, casts out all fear. So do not go forward with fear and trembling, thinking that what the workplace is going to do to you. Because even if, even if the world were to tell you that you can't have that here, I say bring it. Amen. And God will provide for you. God will keep you safe in that place. I've got guys on this job site who are starting to profess their faith that I would have never even guessed in a million years that they're Christian. Their behavior is not of that. One of my guys, he's going through a hard time. He's in recovery. He's been in recovery for only 13 months, and life is throwing him all kinds of things, and he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't have a clue who he is. And I said, look, man, as long as I'm here, you will always have a brother who loves you. You will always have somebody who you can talk to. So take that time and don't let your problems stack up. Don't let them just drive you into acting a fool again, but rather take the time and come and talk to me. I said, I'll punch out. I'll do whatever I got to do because you're more important than any nail we're putting in these boards, anything that we're doing here. And Amen. so I'm learning to love. And, and the guy, the, the job super or the guy who's the project coordinator is starting to talk about the work that he's doing and he's starting to walk these things out and, and I tell you what the atmosphere is changing I've got guys from other trades who are professing their Christianity and learning to walk it out without fear in that place I had two conversations Amen. for at least 30 minutes the other day with subcontractors and they're talking about Jesus Christ and how he's changed their life and how he's brought them to sobriety and how things are changing in their world and it's like this wouldn't have happened if people wouldn't have had the courage to say, Fred, <laughs> you're a pastor. Amen. You're a child. You're a son of God. Amen. Because Amen. even I trip and stumble. And I always need friends and I'll always need family. And that's why it's such a blessing to piggyback off of what you were saying. That's why it's such a blessing that we take time as a family yeah. to show up on Sundays to be Encourage here so that I get to know these people. I mean, this group over here, I just love these guys. Woo! Really Give them. it up for them. And you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're finding this morning that I'm putting pieces together and, and I don't know them really well, but, but I just love them. They're smiley, happy, joyful people. And it's like we're friends on Facebook and it's like, you're that, you look so much like that. Fa well, I am. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're you Mel's so daughter. Like guy, friends with oh, yeah. 
So we start to put those things together, but, but now when she hears my story, when he hears my story, when we talk, now I know that I've added people to the fold that are going to be praying for me as Amen. I struggle. I've, I'm creating a safe place where I can take the problems of the world and I can, I can share them with my beloved brothers and sisters. They take them and they pray, and now we've got power. We've got multiplied power by multiplied bodies of believers fanning out, and so when, when I'm struggling, and I've put it out on Facebook, they say, you know what, I know this guy. No, I know this guy. And there's something really going on, and I'm going to pray right now. And not only am I going to pray, but I'm going to send it out to all my Facebook friends. Amen. You know what I mean? We start to build and grow this army by becoming family and friends. I don't know about how many of you were blessed by the Thanksgiving meal last week, but oh my word, Tell me about it. There is something about sitting around with great people, enjoying great food. Oh, am I done? You're done. Give me the mic, Did you want to say something? I told you don't give me this thing. Give it up for Brother Fred. <laughs> Man. Would you like to hear more of Fred? Please tune in 7 a.m. Tuesday morning. Or you can watch a replay of Supernatural now. Our next episode will be coming out on Tuesday. Praise God. Now, Fred's awesome. Isn't he awesome? You know, Proverbs 21 says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Sometimes we got to get reminded about who we are. We are righteous. And when we get reminded of that, we can be bold as a lion. You know, wherever you are, and we talked about this last week, when you're doing an excellent job, and Fred does an excellent job, like he's excellent at what he does. And I don't know if you caught that about his crew and, you know, this and that. And, you know, he's, he's, he's in a position of excellence. He operates with integrity and excellence. And because of he operates at a level of integrity and excellence, that allows him to say things like, hey, you don't have to be here if you don't want to be here, but at 7 a.m., this is what I'm doing. And people show up because they respect. They're like, I don't want your Jesus. Nah, that's not. Uh. But you, you got something. They don't realize that it's Jesus that he's got. You know, they, don't, they're not, they, don't, they haven't made the connection yet, but they look at him and they say, I'm going to show up because if you're doing some kind of blessing thing, I want to be part of it. <laughs> you know? Just in case it is real because I'm seeing something in you that's real. And maybe this was it. Maybe, you know, because when, you know, we, we, uh, Romans 12 2 says that by the renewing of our mind, we become transformed and we get to prove the perfect will of God. In the way Fred is operating at his work, he's proving something to people. That's showing God's will. And they can't, they may not be quite connecting the dots yet, but he's bringing proof of something. And he's bringing proof of something they want to see. And he's, bring, he's bringing it to his place of work. You know, uh, last week we talked about uh, no man can serve two masters. You know, Matthew 6, 24, uh, no man can serve two masters. He's either going to hate one and love the other or love the other and hate the one or, you know. The reality is, when you go to work to earn a living, this is the part where I talked about, hey, don't get offended and stop listening. When you go to work to earn a living, <laughs> and you're thinking, I have to earn my living. I'm going to work to earn my money. We're, we're kind of, who are we serving? All right? Just, who, are, who are we serving in that thought process? When we go to work, and we understand that God's our source, and our work is our, 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 work is our assignment. Okay? Our work is our assignment. Our, your job is not your source. Your job is not your source. Your job is your assignment. All right? Fred knows he's got a call on his life. And he, he even used the words, God's put me back on this assignment. He's on assignment right now. The job is not his source. The job is his assignment. When you're working for money, your number one priority is yourself, your family. You got to look out for number one. Like you are looking, you take the responsibility of being your provider. I know this because that's how I lived for most of my life. I was the provider. That was it. That's how I grew up. You provide, you provide, you provide. In the last few years, I've been making the transition from 
and Melissa and I have been doing it together, and we've shared a lot of testimonies about this last week. If you, didn't, if you weren't here last week, please go back and, and, and watch that. We've shared a lot of testimonies about the Lord being our provider, just the journey that we've been on over the last few years. Now, he is my provider. I am not my provider. Melissa is not her provider. He is our source. He is our provider. He has put us on assignment in different places to do different things. When we make this mind this switch from like, I am, my, I am my provider, I am my provider. When we, when we get to ch- ch- transfer our thinking, just like Romans 12, 2 says, we become transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we realize that the Lord did in fact transfer us from the kingdom of darkness into this kingdom of light of his dear son that he loves. And when Jesus said, you can't serve both God and mammon, the deification of wealth, he was really being honest. Like he, was, he really meant it. And he really wants us to trust in him, put our faith in him as our source. Then we get to make this jump. We get to, be this, we get to do a transformation in the way we approach work. Now we're no longer going to work to earn our money because we realize that Jesus has already earned our living. Amen? John 10.10 10 says, I'm going to live an abundant life because of Jesus. If we look at the word abundant, look it up in your Strong's Concordance. I have. I've studied it out so many different ways. I don't know how many. I mean, I love studying this stuff. But that's talking about not just scraping by. Because a lot of Christians believe that God's going to not... You know, I talked about how when God called me into ministry, I knew he wasn't going to let me lead me out into the wilderness to die. That was where I was at. I believed God wasn't going to let me, like, completely, you know... My family wasn't going to starve to death. We may, may, we may be hungry, but we're not going to starve to death. But you gotta, we got to change the way we think. And when Jesus says he's going to be providing us with this life and life abundant, we have to make this transition from understanding that, man, even if we are working hard for our money, we got to start to think, like, man, I am, God has put me in a job, and he's put, put us in jobs where we work hard. We work hard but we got to be working hard for him. Amen? We're working hard for him. We're working hard for him. And in, the, in our working, and in our, in our working, we get to work with the excellence of the Lord. And as we work with the excellence of the Lord, we get to bring his kingdom to our place of work. We get to bring our, his kingdom to our, to our place of wherever it is. And work provides us an opportunity to bring his kingdom, but it also provides us an opportunity for us to grow spiritually, for us to grow personally, for us to grow professionally, so that we can be ready for the next thing the Lord is going to do. So David, you guys know the story, David, King David, amen? Okay, so King David got anointed to be king of Israel, and then he got sent back out to watch the sheep. Talk about being called, hey? The Samuel, the prophet, comes and says, hey, I'm, you know, when Samuel showed up, like, if you were not righteous, you ran, and if you were righteous, you just, like, got down. You know what I mean? Like, Samuel was the man of God. And Samuel shows up. David's own father's like, I don't know, man. That's it. That's all of them. And there's one more. there got to be one more. Oh, I forgot about the little one. Yeah, let me get him. Okay, now you're king of Israel. Go back. Go watch the sheep. Like, that's just weird. I was like, I read that. I'm like, ah, oh, man, how did that work? But so David goes back. Now when it comes time, when Goliath comes, remember Goliath, okay? What's David been doing? He's been tending the sheep. His brothers are in the army because, you know, you know that because when the story goes, his brothers are like, what are you doing here? You just came here because you're a little, you know, they're just like, they're mocking him and ridiculing him. Now, when David shows up, he's, he's I love this. This is one of my... I love this, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, passages where he, um, hang on, I can't even find it. it uh, first, I think it's, what is it, Samuel, 1 Samuel seventeen thirty six. Okay. He says, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. All right. What's David been doing? He's been watching the sheep. He's been working. But who's he been working for? David's been working for the Lord. Amen. And David's the one who wrote the Psalms, like, you get to be as bold as a lion, man. Well, how does he know that? Because he's, he's been as bold as a lion, because he's, he's understood, like, man, I'm, 
I'm anointed by God. You're, if you're born again, you're anointed by God. You hear me? You're anointed by God. God has called you. God has called you. And when you get to operate out of your identity as a child of God, amen, as a child of God. Now, David's operating out of his identity, and he's saying, hey, in the process of me working as a lowly shepherd boy, I have learned to trust the Lord. I have seen his supernatural breakthrough happen. I have killed the lion and the bear. Man, David wouldn't have had that opportunity if he would have just went home and sat on his couch and waited to become king. In the process of going to work on his assignment, David got to see God's ability and power show up for him and through him. So when, he got to, when, when the time came for Goliath to be there, David is looking at him, and he's got, a t- he's got a track record. He's got a history of testimony with the Lord that he can look back on and say, oh, well, I've seen this, and I've seen this. So, you know, we talked about your muscles last week, your faith muscles. You all got the same amount of muscle. The difference in sizes and strength is have you worked it out, okay? Your job, your assignment, your, your wherever, your, wherever God has placed you for this season of your life, you're going to have some opportunities to work out your faith, amen? You're going to have some opportunities to work out those muscles of faith and say, man, I feel like my faith has gotten stronger. You got the same amount of faith as I have, but what are you doing with it? Are you working it out? David's been working his faith out, so when he sees Goliath, he's like, hmm, what's that? Just this, uh, he says, that's an uncircumcised Philistine. He's referring to his covenant. When David says, he's, who's this uncircumcised Philistine? He's, made, he's drawing, the circumcision was a sign of the covenant with God. David is saying, this guy doesn't have a covenant with God. He's crazy. He's crazy. David was looking at the giant saying, this guy is out of his mind. He's, he's crazy. And he's looking at everybody else, like kind of like, I can imagine everybody's looking at David saying, what's wrong with this kid? What's wrong with this guy? Doesn't he know he's a kid? Dave, but David wasn't looking at himself. He's looking at God. Amen? He's looking at the covenant. He's not considering himself. Like Abraham didn't consider himself. He considered what, he said God was well able to perform what he has promised. David is not looking at himself. He's looking at the covenant. He's looking at the relationship with God. And he's looking at the, he's looking at the giant saying, there's no relationship with God there. Wow, this guy's out of his mind. That doesn't make sense, does it? It does not make, that type, the way David's thinking does not make sense. But it makes faith. Okay? David is not living by sense. He's living by faith. David is living by faith. He's saying, wow. And he's looking at the giant saying, that guy's crazy. He's out of his mind. He doesn't understand the covenant. But today, I will say, most of us don't understand our covenant. We look at the giant and we say, whoo, that's a big giant. How am I going to do this? Well, that's not the question we need to ask ourselves. When we see the giant, we need to say, whoo, that's a big giant. How's God going to do this? It's going to be cool. It's It's a different way of thinking. It's a different way of thinking. We're not thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about our God. Okay, so when you're in your job, when you're in your work, there's things are going to come that might seem impossible. Gary, I, I can't get this off. Could you come up here for a second? All right. I don't know if we've ever shared this testimony, but I keep thinking about it, and usually that's a sign that every time I look at you. Now, okay, so we get assignments at our job that are going to be beyond what we can do. Okay, because God has to move you past the God has to move you past the possible into the place of the impossible, and there are going to be times in your work day, and in where in where you work, where you're going to have the opportunity to step through the door of impossibility, and God's going to meet your faith, because you're serving Him. Okay, and when you serve Him. He's going to meet you where you're at, and He's going to meet your faith even in your work environment. Now, you shared a testimony with me once about. Honest, you, were at, you were at your job, and you got put on a project, and you had no idea how to even do it. You were like, I don't even, like, kind of like, is this a mistake? Why did they ask me to do this? And what did you do? You know which one I'm talking about? Well, I'll, there's a bunch, but <laughs> most of them I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, <laughs> this particular one, um, it was stuff I'd never done before in my life, and I'd been hired to do it. And I didn't know what to do. 
And so, and I had to have it by Monday, and this was Friday. So I spent half, at least half a day just praying in tongues. And I got to a point where I said, okay, Lord, after what seemed like hours, I said, Lord, I believe I receive. And from this, I believe you've given me wisdom. You've been made unto me wisdom. And I'm going to write down on this piece of paper whatever comes out of my spirit now. And I started writing. And I filled up like two pages. I didn't know what, even what I was writing. Whatever hit my hand or my brain, I wrote it. And I filled up two pages, and then... You know, is this like technical stuff, like yeah. calculations and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, okay. it's stuff up here, <laughs> above me. Anyway, you know, I had some familiarity, but not. I didn't understand what he asked me to do. So after I had written all that out, I took it, and I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I started going down the list, and as I did, I would go get the material and do exactly... And it made no sense to me. But I got through those three pages of notes, and I put together what I thought I was saw in the notes. And Monday morning, he I handed it to him. I said, Your boss? My boss. I handed my boss and said, Is this what you want? And he said, I'll get back to you. So he took it. And he went into his office, and he's looking through it. I'm sitting there, there you know, I'm... Just thinking about it, I get embarrassed. I, I'm flushing because my mind is saying, you're crazy. My heart is saying, just, be, just relax. Well, in about 15, 20 minutes, he comes back. He said, yeah, this is it. This is it. And he said, I have a settlement conference in Washington, D.C. tomorrow that I have to present this, and I want you to go with me. And I'm, I'm thinking, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, boy. So I, I didn't know squat about it, okay? <laughs> he, and so, he did it by the spirit, so he didn't know what he did. He's like. Well, the next day, we get on a plane, and we fly to Washington, D.C. from Nebraska, and we meet with these people on the, who are on the other side of the table. It was a settlement proposal. And, and my, I'm sitting behind my boss trying to, you know, hide. And he's at the table, and he's going through it, explaining this is what it is. And that day... They settled the case, saved our clients anywhere between five and ten million dollars. Okay, and we got on the plane, and I, you know, after that all happened, I'm I'm like this, you know, and we get on the plane, head back, and I'm sitting by my boss, whose name is Ed, and uh, he was smiling, and you know, and and I'm sitting there hoping he doesn't ask me any questions, and <laughs> and so the Lord said, "You tell him what happened." I said, no, no, no. <laughs> anyway, he started asking me questions, and I told him, Ed, this is, I, don't, I don't have a clue what was in that stuff you gave me. <laughs> I'm telling my boss this. And he said, are you nuts? <laughs> and I said, no, but the Lord gave it to me. He gave it to me, and I mm -hmm. believe it worked, didn't it? <laughs> and, and he said, yeah. But you know what? From that, I, I never prayed with him, my boss, or anything. But every time I'd see him, I just have a habit of saying, praise the Lord. He'd look at me first, say, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, I mean, just. That is, I, and this was a Christian company you worked at? No, oh, no, it, it wasn't. wasn't. It was just it a was company, not, yeah, right? A company, it was just a company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise God. That is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, praise the Lord. Now, that's what I'm talking about, okay? That's what I'm talking about. That, you know, that's a really, that's an extreme example, but, you know. Melissa's had the same thing. I remember, was that last Christmas or Christmas before? Your boss, your boss gave her like this impossible problem about, like, with code and all this stuff. And he was like, because she wanted to get off a little bit early for Christmas Eve or something, right? Or an extra day off or something. Yeah, like a half day. And, and she, she just, you know, our motto was if you don't ask, you don't get. So I'm like, yeah, you don't have the time, but just ask anyway. And he's like, yeah, I'll give it to you if you figure out how to do this. And she's like, by three o'clock. And she's like, okay. And he, she just started praying in the spirit and typed out the code and got it back to him, and he's like, wow, how'd you do that? She's like, I asked the Holy Spirit, and he told me, oh, yeah, because she doesn't code at that level of code. It was a different type of coding, you know, and so this is, but this isn't just for, like, computer people or technical people. This is, like, this is, 
This is the power that we have. This is the stuff that's inside of us that God wants to... It's His Holy Spirit is inside... The Holy Spirit is inside of you and He can release this favor to you and He can give you the answers and He can, he can bring the sales to you. He can bring the business clients to you. Man, I, did we share this last week about uh, when I was praying with my friend, the business guy, the last few weeks and we've been praying and declaring and he's just like, I need to talk to this guy and so we literally pray for it and somebody he hasn't talked to in months, and then the guy sends him an email before he can even open his computer up. We did it, we did it last week again. I mean, it just like saying, hey, Lord, I feel like you're sending me in this direction for this business proposal, or you're, I feel like you, know, you want me to hit my sales targets this month because you want to bless me, so I'm just going to call those clients in. I'm going to call these sales in. I'm going to declare that I am going to get that bonus this quarter because you're blessing me, amen? And because, you want, because I'm honoring you with what I do, you can bless me. You know, this is a different way of thinking, but we have to think different because we're not, you, your, your coworkers next to you that are unsaved, they don't have the Holy Spirit. They can't operate in this. They can't operate in the supernatural. You can, you can, and you have to, you have to, because that's what God has called us to do. It doesn't matter what your job is. You know, oh, Jeff, big Jeff's not here, but he's, he, he was in Iraq, um, John's brother, and he has testimony after testimony about going out on patrol. And he, it got to the point where the people would request him, be, they like, I'm not going out, you know, like the dignitaries and the people that he had to escort would, John, correct me if I'm wrong in any of this, but they would request your brother to lead, to lead the convoy because they, they actually got to the point where people were thinking he must, he, he must have his own network of spies because he always knows what's going on. But he would just pray in the Spirit, and he'd say, whoa, we're not going down that street. We're going to take a detour. Because the Holy Spirit would guide them. Yep. Seriously. Woo. This is real stuff. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a contractor or if you're a, a code writer or if you're a, if you're a soldier. It doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit wants to be your guide. And, he, and when we switch our thinking and we realize that, man, I am not working for a paycheck. I'm working for the Lord. My job, my number one job is not to watch out for number one. My job is to, number one job is to advance his kingdom to where he's called me to advance it to. Christ is number one, not me. And that applies to my job. Think about it. God would be totally crazy if he would say, hey, I, I'm providing, you know, all things available to you. He's, he's going to, you know, we read about how God can richly and abundantly bless you above and beyond all you ask or think. This is reality but yet that doesn't apply to your work. That doesn't even make sense. You spend more time at work than you do anything else. You spend more waking hours at work than you do praying, than you do reading your Bible, than you do with your family, than you do with your children. That's seriously. God wants to bless you at work. This is a reality. Byron, I know you got crazy testimony after crazy testimony, you know, about people, you know, we talked about this before. Like, you know, people are worried, like, oh, I don't know if I should pray at work. Man, when people need prayer, they come to your office. Right? I need some prayer. Where's, where's Byron's office? I got to go. You know? And he's in government. He's in city government, man. they like, oh, where's, where's Byron's office? I need a miracle. They, they find him. Man, this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah? It, whether you're a carpenter, whether you're a, a government official, whether you're a soldier, whatever you're called to do, there's going to be, Mel, you've told me testimonies about how you're, you're, you're driving your truck and you're like, well, I'm getting a parking spot in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, parking spots open up and you just go in and unload, you know. I mean, this is for real. This is how God works, man. This is, if, you, if you're willing to believe it, though, okay, because it's all available, all grace is available through faith, all right? You, you got to understand this. It's all available, everything, everything is available by faith. If it, if it wasn't available, okay, Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it may be by grace. God doesn't move according to your need. This is ser serious, serious truth here. God does not move according to your need. If God moved according to your need, you would have been saved immediately. Everybody on earth would be saved because everybody needs salvation by faith, okay? It's by faith. You have to put faith to receive the grace of God. And if you have zero faith that God's going to bless you at work, well, 
you're gonna be working a lot, a lot of hours. You're gonna be working really hard. But you gotta. But how does this? How does this change? How does this change? It's the through the renewing of your mind is how you begin to, to get these seeds. It's through the, the seed of the word getting in you. It's the seed of God's word getting in you and changing the image of yourself on the inside. So you begin to see yourself the way God sees you. You begin to see God the way God really is. And when you get the word of God in you, let the, the seed of his word grow in you, man, it changes who you are. It, it, everything begins to change. Everything begins to change. Byron City, if you guys want to come up here. Um, so what, what you need, what we need to do, and what I've, been, what, I've, what I've started doing, man, instead of working hard at working, and I'm not saying don't work. You go, God bless you with a job, Okay. But if you're, if you're, if you, so if, here's an example. If your job is in the sales, instead of staying late and making those few extra calls to line up those extra meetings like you did last week and the week before and it didn't quite work the way you thought it was going to anyway, take the extra time and say, I'm going to spend some time in God's word. I'm going to spend some time declaring God's word over my life, over my family, over my job, and I'm going to start calling in the sales. I'm going to start calling in the appointments. I'm going to start declaring that what the work I've done is going to, the the seeds that have been planted are going to start to reap. I'm going to start to reap the fruit off of that. Because God wants us, he doesn't want us to, to work so hard for the money that we can't work for him. He wants us to realize that we're working for him. He's the source for the money and that we spend, we spend our time working and, and toiling in the word of God, okay? Our, our burden shouldn't be working overtime, overtime, all the time, all the time. Our, our burden should be in reading the word and declaring the word and speaking the word and believing the word because God wants to move us to this place from where we say, oh, that makes sense. That, that's a good idea. That makes sense to saying, Lord, that doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Amen? Because faith doesn't need to make sense. In fact, if it does make sense, that's not really faith. All right? Uh, seriously, faith, faith, there's faith and there's sense. Faith, sense. When you're operating in faith, which God called all the righteous to operate in, people are going to look at you and say, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> they're, all looking at, they're all looking at David saying, well, that doesn't make sense. And David's operating in faith, and he's saying, man, that giant's crazy. Come on, guys, let's go. Everybody's like, you go, you just go, you just go, you know? But when you operate in faith, people are going to stand back, and they're going to watch you, and they're going to say, hmm, you, you go. You, yeah, you, you go ahead and try that. And what happened with David? He, he slew the giant. How many giant slayers did David have underneath him? He had giant slayers underneath him. His, the mighty men, man, read about the mighty men. He had three giant slayers underneath him that slayed the giants. All right? When you operate in faith, you bring other people along, just like Fred was talking about. Fred's talking, Fred mentioned that. He's like, man, I started operating in faith. Now I got people coming up to me saying, hey, and they're starting talking to me about Jesus and the power of, and how they've been delivered. And, and all of a sudden, the whole atmosphere is changing. The whole place is changing. Praise God. You're bringing glory to God right there. Amen. Gary, would you close this up? great thou art is coming up. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Galatians 2.20 has been my verse of the week. I've been crucified with Christ, but nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The life I now live in the flesh, I don't live by the flesh. I live by his faith. That's our call. Amen. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place today. Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. 
And if you're under the sound of my voice today, anyone here or on the live stream, and you're saying, I would like to know this Jesus. I would like to know God as my Father. Well, that's for you right now. He's there. He's waiting. And the fact that you're asking that question or having those thoughts, He's knocking at the door of your heart. He's not going to push His way in. He only comes in by invitation. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, any man, regardless of the background, if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. So just ask him right now, Jesus, I open the door. Please come into my heart right now. Now thank you for it, because he did. And Lord, we give you praise and honor and thanksgiving for that one, whoever they are, that ask you to come in. They are now your child, and we give you praise for it. And Lord, I speak a blessing over those here and, and those that are watching. I ask, Lord, that you flood their heart, flood their minds with your love and your life and the light of your word in Jesus' name. We give you praise for how great you are in our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Oh my God, when I am no consider all the worlds I here today and he's here today to meet that need in Jesus name amen